problems do we have here this morning? If you can stand up. Uh, this is an awesome day to recognize our fathers. Tell you, sometimes we, you may be seated, sometimes it's, we feel like sometimes we may un, be unworthy as dads sometimes. I know things change and a lot of us, just, uh, this is a trying time sometimes. But I'll tell you what, it's wonderful to know that God has our back. You know what? Yes. He said we was made in his image and in his likeness and he gave us the wisdom to become fathers and dads. And we have beautiful children to show for that. It's so awesome to be here this morning. If this young lady or you could help me draw these names here. We've got three lucky winners here that's going to be some good fathers. And listen, don't get too excited. Your wife's still going to pick which one you get to go to.
It's not a maybe. It's not if, and, or but. But a promise is a promise. That means this will take place or this will happen. Maybe our culture, maybe us because of the way that we live, you know, promises may not mean much to us anymore. We may hear a promise, you may hear a promise, and because of all the empty promises that you've endured in your life, it doesn't mean anything. But listen, when God makes a promise, it's different than when we make a promise. God is in covenant with us. And God has made an oath with us as His children that what He promised, He will perform. It's not a maybe. It's not an if. It's not, it's, not, it's not if you do this and if you do that. God says, I will. He means I will. And we have the promise of the Father. Promises flow from our lips so very easily sometimes. How many of us have made promises to God only not to fulfill them? How many of us have said, God, if you get me out of this jam, I'll do this. God, if you'll help me financially, maybe I'll do this. God, if you'll help me in this relationship that I'm in, God, I'll do this. And how many knows that God is faithful and He comes through only to find us on the other end not holding up our deal or our bargain. Amen. But God is still faithful. The Bible teaches us that when we're unfaithful, God is still faithful. You ever thought about that? God is not changed or moved by our promises. And I know sometimes we may make promises to God in hopes that it will give us some kind of, of, of power or some kind of thing to grip onto to, to, to do what we ask God to do and promise God to do. But so many times we fail in that promise. Now I'm so glad that God is not like us. Amen. He doesn't forget or get busy. He's not distracted easily. He never falters or fails. Our Father in heaven, Numbers 23 and 19, says that He is not a man that He should lie. You hear that? He is not a man that He should lie. He is not a human that He should change His mind. Has He ever spoken and failed to act? Has He ever promised and not carried it through? Think about that. Think about that just for a moment. I love what the psalmist says in Psalm 119, 140. Your promises have been thoroughly tested. That is why I love them so much. I can't tell you of a promise that I've ever heard from God in His Word or through His voice that He hasn't brought to pass. But as we'll find out, sometimes we have to wait for that promise. You know, we find out in Acts chapter 1 and verse 4, Jesus says, wait for the promise." Of the Father. And we can be confident, we can be sure that what God said He would do, He will do. Amen. Praise the Lord. I got a little ahead of myself, but that's okay. You know, I'm going to be in Acts chapter 1, just so you know, verse 4. But God is a faithful God. God is, God is so pure, and His promises are so rich, and He's given us so much to hold on to, so much hope and so much peace and so much joy and we can bank on it because he promised he promised i'm here today because of the promises of god i'm here this morning because i've stood on the promises of god and we've all we've all had that scripture we've all had that promise that god has placed in our hearts and i'll be honest mine's always been the book of philippians you know you may know it you may not it's in chapter one verse six it tells me that I can be confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you, he will perform it until the day of Christ Jesus. And there's just something, I heard that verse and I read that many years ago, but you know that verse has never left my heart because I know he promised. I know God has started something in me and God has started something in you as his children and because we are children of God, he says be confident. He says, be fully persuaded that what I have started in you, I will complete. That is a promise of our Heavenly Father. And we know that He is not a man that He should lie. Neither is He the Son of Man that He should repent. He has spoken it and it shall come to pass. Our Heavenly Father is a Father of promise. The book of Acts chapter 1. Starting in verse 4, it says, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait 
for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when the Lord, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? You know, the disciples were getting a little ahead of themselves. You know, they're starting to question God about future events. And Jesus says, hey guys, let's stay on, let's stay on task and stay focused. He says, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria, to the end of the earth. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you so much, God, for your precious promises. I thank you, God, for the Holy Spirit that you promised us and the Holy Spirit that works in us. God, you see every man, woman, and boy and girl this morning, God, I just ask that you speak to our hearts according to your word. I pray, God, that you bring, God, some, some, some new promises, God, to our hearts and our lives. And maybe those promises, God, that we've been holding on to for so long and that we've become discouraged and waiting for, God, maybe, God, you can encourage us just to continue to wait because you're faithful, that promise. And I just ask you, God, just to anoint our hearts and our ears and our spirits this morning as you speak your word to us. In your precious name, let God's people say Amen. You know, I could spend a lot of time going through the Bible and the Scriptures talking about the promises of God. But I know that most of us, I hope all of us are believers, and we can testify to the fact that God is faithful to what He promised. And that what God has said, God will do. Amen. He will. He, he, always, he always has. Like the, like the psalmist says, your promises have been thoroughly tested. And they have been thoroughly tested. But see, God has given us something as children of God. And that is the promise of His Holy Spirit. And that's what He's telling His disciples. He said, you've heard me talk about it. You've heard me talk about how I must go away. You've heard me say that it is to your benefit that I go away. And I've got to admit, you've got to think in your mind, how can that be beneficial for Jesus to go away? But Jesus says, you don't see the bigger picture. Because I'm here with you. You know, I'm stationary with you. I can only be right here, right now with you. But when I go away, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, and He shall dwell within you. But guess what? Not you alone, but all those who call upon the name of Jesus Christ. So instead of just one of me right here, right now with you, there's about to be 120 of me right here in the midst of Jerusalem and Israel and Judea and Samaria. And as you proclaim my gospel, as you further this gospel, they're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So my spirit's going to begin to spread. And there's going to be thousands, and there's going to be hundreds of thousands, and there's going to be millions of people just like me, Jesus says, doing what I'm doing right now to empower the kingdom of God. And that's what Jesus is saying. And that's why it was so important for the disciples to understand why Jesus was leaving. But he wasn't going to leave them without help. And he wasn't going to leave us without a comfort because of the promise of his Holy Spirit. He said, wait for it, and you shall receive the promise of the Father. And all we've got to do is go one chapter over, and we see the Holy Spirit fall upon them. We see God empowering them to do great and miraculous things because they waited on the promise of the Father. And the Holy Spirit was the evidence that God was faithful, that what He had said, that He would fulfill. And because we can read about it being fulfilled in the Bible, we know too that when we call upon His name, guess what? His Holy Spirit fills us. Amen? The Holy Spirit fills us. The Holy Spirit comes to dwell within us. And that changes everything. Because I was thinking, what would I do without the Holy Spirit? Some of us, we may not exactly know the Holy Spirit's role in our lives. But can I quickly tell you some things that the Holy Spirit does in us and through us and for us. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. We, we, we find this in Romans. If you go back to chapter 8, verse 26, it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. 
What do you think Paul was saying when he was saying that through my weakness, God is made strong because of the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives? You see, the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to do things that we can't do in our own strength. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to do what, what, what we can't do in our own knowledge. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, in our faults, in our failures. He's there. He promised He would fill our hearts and help us. That's why when I'm weak, I know that He is strong. And I rely upon His strength and I rely upon His promises because His promises are not dependent upon me. This, I, I can't dictate whether or not God is faithful to His promise because He is faithful because He promised. See, I, I, am, I, I am under the influence and I'm under the persuasion that I can trust in God because He promised. We can all look at our lives and we can look what's going on around us and we can thank God, where are you at? But I can look to heaven and I can know that God, you promised. You know, I said, we say that a lot. We say, but you promised. But you know what, we, we can turn that around just a little bit and say, God, I'm weak. But you promised I would be strong. God, I don't feel like I should, but you promised that I could be filled with the spirit of power. God, I feel down and depressed, but you promised the joy of the Lord is my strength. See, we got to begin to turn around all of this uncertainty and all these things in which we fail to realize and remember the promise of the Lord that was given to us in Christ Jesus by his precious Holy Spirit that fills us. He helps us in our weakness. The Holy Spirit teaches us. John 14, 26 says, When the Father sends the Counselor as my representative, and by the Counselor I mean the Holy Spirit, He will teach you everything and will remind you of everything that I myself have told you. We're all been in situations where we just didn't know what to say or what to think or we may not even remember what God has said. But the Holy Spirit inside of us, He just does something. He sparks something within us to where we recall the promises of the Lord. I like 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Paul says, but we know these things because God has revealed them to us by His Spirit. And His Spirit searches out everything and shows us even God's deep secrets. No one can know what anyone else is really thinking except that person alone. It says that no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And God has actually given us His spirit so we can know the wonderful things that God has freely given us. Where would you be without the Holy Spirit this morning? What kind of relationship would we have without the precious teaching, comforting, encouraging, and empowering power of the Spirit in our lives? That's who lives inside of us. It's not a fairy tale. It's not something just to make us feel good or help us to get through the day. Jesus promised that we would be filled with His Spirit, that we would be baptized. Think about that illustration. We wouldn't just be sprinkled with a little bit of Holy Spirit, that we would be immersed into the body of Christ Jesus through the power of His Holy Spirit. Think about when we do physical baptisms in water. We submerge that individual underneath the water to where they are consumed with the water. Amen. Jesus was giving us that same illustration that we would be baptized in the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit would consume us and fill us and saturate us. We must know and believe and be fully persuaded that what God has said, He will perform. I believe with all of my heart the reason we don't live the victorious life that God has given us is because we're not fully persuaded. We're not fully persuaded that what God has said, He has done. Because if we understood that He promised, it would change everything about us because it would not matter what we look like or how we feel or what the situation is like. We would remember that God is faithful and that God promised and that we can trust in Him, that He will teach us and empower us. And the Holy Spirit, this is, this is one of the most amazing ones that I love. The Holy Spirit even helps us pray. Uh, the, Bible, the Bible teaches us in Romans that sometimes we don't know what to pray for. 
Sometimes we don't even know how to pray. Have you ever been in that situation in your life? Have you ever come to the place in your life where you just didn't know how to pray? There was things going on that you didn't know how. God, I'm at loss for words. God, I don't know. I wouldn't even. I mean, have you ever just got before and stumbled over your words because you just didn't know what to say? You didn't have words to, to put into expression to, to ask. You didn't know how to ask God for help. You know what God says? That the Holy Spirit will pray for you. He will make intercession for you and make drawings on your behalf that cannot be expressed in words. Think about that. That's who lives inside of me. When we get to those situations to where we don't know what to do, we don't know where to go, how to get there, or what to even pray for. No, we don't have to say a word. We just come and bow before the Father and the Holy Spirit inside of us begins to have a conversation with God. Remember the Holy Spirit. He knows the Spirit of God. He knows the deepest secrets of God. Why? Because it's His Spirit. And He begins to pray for us. He begins to make intercession for us. And that, that to me is so amazing. That to me is so empowering and life-changing and delivering because I know that I have a God in heaven who His own Spirit is making intercession on my behalf. That is saying God is praying for you. God is interceding for you because the Holy Spirit and God are the same. Amen. So we have the creator of the world making intercession all for us on our behalf. Where would we be without the Holy Spirit? This is the promise of the Father. There's so many promises we can hang on to. But the fact that Jesus came to this world and died on the cross for my sins just so he could fill me with his spirit, that is the best promise that we could ever hold on to. That we have the spirit of Christ living and dwelling inside of us. And that's why Jesus says, I will never leave you or forsake you. Why? Because he's always inside. And wherever I go, he goes. And whatever I do, he does. Why? Because he lives in that is why he can say, I will never leave you or forsake you. Because he said, I'm a part of you. I live within you. I dwell in you. You are my son. You are my daughter. And I have filled you with my very own presence and power. And you're, you're, you're strong because of my strength. You, you have knowledge because of my direction. Listen, everything that we have is because of God and his precious Holy Spirit. Praise God. Amen. The Holy Spirit, He convicts us of sin. John 16 and 8. And when He has come, He will convict the world of sin. Again, another one of my favorites. Because there's a lot of times that we may not know exactly what we should or shouldn't do. But we have a voice inside of us. It may, it, there may be areas in this world that they consider gray. There may be areas in this world that they think it's okay, but we have a spirit inside of us that convicts us of sin. You see, he's teaching us how to do what's right. He's not just leaving us on our own and in the dark to try to figure it out and grow around trying to find our way out or trying to find out what's right or what's wrong. No, he's giving us his spirit inside of us that teaches us what is wrong. And not only teaches us what is wrong, but he teaches us what is right. He directs us and He guides us through His precious Holy Spirit. You see how important it is that we must understand how, how our knowledge of God and the promises of God must infiltrate our mind and drift to our heart so that we can fully understand that the promises of God are yes. And in Christ Jesus, the Amen. Because He died and He was buried. And he rose again. And Jesus says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Every promise I've ever spoken will come to fruition in Christ Jesus when he was raised from the dead. God was saying, Amen. He was saying, He is alive forevermore. Amen. I put his spirit within my people. He is saying, Amen by Christ Jesus. God is a God of precious promises. The Holy Spirit. He's a good friend. I don't know what I would do without him. Ephesians chapter 1 tells us that the Spirit is God's guarantee to us. 
He is a deposit, if you will, into our lives, guaranteeing what is to come. Because if God fills us with His Spirit and fulfills His promise, that, that is just a guarantee that God will do what He said He would do. He fills us with His Spirit. That's why, you know, when we read the book of Acts, it kind of begins to change everything because we begin to see the church come alive. We begin to see the people of God begin to be joined together into one body. And that one body is in Christ Jesus, the bride of Christ, of whom we call the church. He begins to empower us and He begins to lead us and guide us and to direct us in ways in which are beyond our capabilities. But he promised us. He promised us the comforter and the helper. So no matter where you're at this morning, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, no matter what questions you have, we have to remember that the Father is faithful and promised. We have to remember that. We have to know that no matter what it looks like, God promised. No matter what we feel, God promised. No matter what we see, God promised. And He's not like me who lets down my children sometimes because I don't live up to my promises. No, God promised. And He will fulfill. And we have to believe that. We have to believe that. The promise of the Holy Spirit and the promise of power. In verse 8, Jesus told His apostles, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Power. God has filled us with power. 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 Wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. We've been filled with the very precious promise and the gift of the Holy Spirit. And God says, I will baptize you with my spirit and I will give you power. Power to live, power to give, power to serve, power to do what only I through you can do. We are victorious because of His power. We are more than conquerors because of His power, because of His promise, because God told us, this is what I will do, and I will do it. Second Timothy tells us God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of what? Of power. He has given us a spirit of power, of love, of a sound mind. That's what God has given us. Why do we live without power? Why do our lives seem so powerless when our Father who promised us power has given us power? To me, I, again, I believe it's with our head knowledge because we fail to understand that God is faithful to His promises. You see, we are His children. We are His children. Jesus gave an illustration. If, you have, if your son comes up to you and asks you for bread, are you going to give him a snake or stone? You know, if he comes and asks you for fish, will you give him a serpent? He says, no, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more the Father in heaven? We are children of God. He is our Heavenly Father who cares more about us than anybody else in this world. He does. That's who we are. We belong to Him. But so many times we have the prodigal son response. We just hope that somehow we can be a servant in God. We hope that somehow we can just share a portion with the servants. And God's like, what are y'all doing? You totally miss my love and my care. My, you're not a servant. You're my son. You're my daughter. You're my friend. You don't get a portion with those servants and slaves. You get a portion with me because you will reign with me because of my spirit that I placed within you. Church, we have power and we have promise. And it's time that we begin to walk out that promise and that power. It's nothing that we have to feel. It's nothing that we have to all of a sudden be in a church service and feel the wind and change. That all that's good and it feels good. But sometimes we just have to realize and be fully persuaded like Abraham. That what God promised, He will perform. That God already has performed it. We just have to walk in it. Amen. Praise God. God is good. If I could get some music. I believe that's what Paul 
We're saying in Ephesians, in chapter 3, I'm sorry I don't have all these scriptures up, but you know, in Ephesians chapter 3, Paul says that I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will give you mighty inner strength through his Holy Spirit. Uh, he's going to give us strength in our inner spirit through the Holy Spirit. And I pray that Christ will be more and more at home in your hearts as you trust Him. Just watch where Paul's going. May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love. He says, and may you have the power to understand. And Paul even says, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love really is. And may you experience the love of Christ. Though it is so great, you'll never fully understand it. Then you will be filled with the fullness of life and power that comes from God. When, when, when we understand how great his love really is. When we understand how much He really loves us and the promises that He gives us, He says, And then you shall do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think, the Bible says. Listen, we got to understand who we are and who He is. And that He has filled us with the power of His Spirit. Can we all stand this morning? He is the Father of promise. I don't know what anybody's going through this morning. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know. It could be good. It could be bad. I don't know. But I just want to encourage you this morning to rely on this, the promise, all the promises of the Father. I wish I could sing. Sometimes I do because I just, there's a song that we used to sing in church. It's called Standing on the Promises of God. Standing on the promises of Christ my King. You know, there's something about that song that gets me sometimes because when we don't have nothing else. We don't have anything else we can stand on His promise. When all the, the wind of doubt, when it just, when it just blows so freely, we, just, we don't understand, we can still stand on the promises of God. That's what I ask you. Are you standing this morning on His promises? Are we standing this morning on the promises of the King? Because I, I want you to be persuaded. I want you to be convinced. I want you to know in your hearts that He is faithful that promised. Do you want to come this morning? Is there something you need special prayer for you about? Maybe we'll be glad to pray with you. If it's encouragement, let, let the Holy Spirit just move in this place for a few moments. Just think back to all the promises that God has made you. See, His promises are not just in the past. Though they have been made in the past, listen, if they have not come to fruition yet, it's not because they won't. It's because we just sometimes have to wait. Amen. But are you standing this morning? Are you standing on the promises of God? You may have been knocked down, but it's time to stand on His promises. You may feel powerless, but it's time to stand on His promise. You may feel weak and vulnerable, depressed and oppressed, but it's time to stand on His promises this morning. Your gracious Heavenly Father, we're so thankful so thankful. I'm so thankful that you're not a man. God, that your promises are not just words to make us feel bad. They're not just words to, to try to get our attention, but God, your promises are yes and they're amen. God, your promises have been thoroughly tested and that's why we love them so much. But God, I pray that you do something in all of us this morning. I pray that you increase our knowledge of you and your love. I pray, God, that we'll have an understanding of the covenant, which is the promise that you made with us, that you will give us a new heart. You will put a new spirit within us, God. And we are more than conquerors because of Christ Jesus who lives inside of us. God, let us get a hold of that promise. God, let not hell shake that promise from us. But God, let us walk with our heads held high. God, in our hearts and courage and power because we are standing on the promises of Christ.
the King. Did everybody say amen and amen? God is great. God is awesome. Amen. It says this power of the Holy Spirit, he said, is the grand indispensable of Christian witness. One man says, a man may be highly talented. He may be intensively trained and widely experienced, but without spiritual power, he is ineffective. On the other hand, a man may be uneducated, unattractive, and unrefined. Yet let him be endued with the power of the Holy Spirit, and the world will turn out to see him burn for the Almighty God. Amen. There's something about when we get a hold of the Spirit that lives inside of us. Something about when we recognize who lives inside of us. Everywhere that we go, do we, do, we, do we get it? Everywhere we go, everything that we do, God's Spirit is right here with us, in us, filling us, giving us the power and the authority to, to live the life that He promised we could live. Say, so He never promised it would be easy, He never promised we wouldn't suffer. He never promised that we wouldn't be persecuted. In fact, He promises that we would. But see, what He did promise us is that we would have power to live the life that He's called us to live. And that's why Paul says that through Christ, you know what he's saying? Through the Holy Spirit, I can do all things because of God who strengthens me because He lives in me. Amen.